you so much for watching my video. I'm so excited to film this for you today. I've been wanting to film this video for you guys since I went to Yazd in 2019. No, it was 20. No, it was 19. <laughs> Sorry, time is weird. But in 2019, last time I went to Iran, I went on a wonderful trip to Yazd, which is like one of the oldest cities in Iran. I think it's the oldest city in Iran. And I got to go to so many wonderful historic sites and it just, it showed me how cool ancient Persia really was slash is, I don't know. So I just wanted to make this video for you guys with all the really, really interesting things that I have learned about ancient Persia over the course of time. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna get into it. So Persians invented air conditioning and refrigerators. This is literally what inspired this because I got to see like the ancient yachts and everything when I was in Iran and I was like, this is amazing. So basically there's these big like domed clay things in Iran and those were the first refrigerators and when you go into them, you can still go into them today, when you go into them, you can tell it's much cooler in there. The reason it's so cold in there all the time is because, first of all, it's made of clay and they close it up. There's a big, like, pond in the middle that they fill with ice in the wintertime. Like, very little sunlight will get in. So people would use these to put, you know, their food in. Usually they would, you know, use the ice all the time. But you can put your meats in there. Obviously a very smart invention and especially if it's in the middle of the desert. So yeah. And when it comes to the first AC systems, I saw these in some old buildings when I was in Iran as well. I don't even know like how they came up with these things, but they would build the buildings in a certain way that would allow wind to continuously flow in them. It's just so, it's just so, please go watch those videos. I love them. My next crazy fact about ancient Persia is their use of tea. Now I'm not gonna pretend that this one is specific to Iran or Persia because yes, Chinese, like there's a lot of tea is important in many other cultures. But if you're Persian, you know that tea is life and it always has been <laughs> since the ancient time. Tea was a heavily grown and traded product in Persia. It was and is one of the largest exports from Iran. And because of my ancient Persian ties to tea, I've been loving Teamy. <laughs> so Teamy is a wellness brand. They sell teas and skin cares, and I've been really, really loving their products. They sent me a couple, and I bought a bunch more because of how much I love them. All of their items are infused with a tea, or they're just tea, <laughs> and I really love that. So like this mask is infused with green tea, and this serum is infused with hibiscus. The mask is 100% clean, made in small batches with bentonite clay and uh, organic matcha, as I mentioned. And the serum is a vitamin C serum, which is so, so important for your skin. Probably the most important ingredient for your skin is vitamin C because it produces collagen, which is what we want to be young and beautiful. <laughs> so I've really been loving these. I have really damaged pores. Oh my goodness. I have really damaged pores and this has been um, really helping me, I believe. My dog needs to be in this. There's also hyaluronic acid in the serum, which is so, so great, especially if you struggle with acne and as I mentioned, hibiscus. I really love the smell of this. It has a really nice lemongrass scent and a really, really nice consistency. It's super tingly and nice and I just like to put it on like two or three times a week to get a beautiful glow. The serum as well just has a really nice um, consistency as you can see and it has a really cute pink hue which I I don't know I like. I think it makes my skin looks really good. I'm actually just gonna pop this on. So Timmy has been super awesome and sent me a couple of codes for you guys. I have a code that is 15% off anything and I have a code that's 20% off if you spent $40 or more. Um, and then over $50 is free shipping in the United States. I highly recommend. I honestly love these products and I do think I'm gonna continue to buy from this brand. And I love that they are available at Target, Ulta, I think Target.com and Ulta.com. I'm not sure if in store, but um, they're also available at Nordstrom. So yeah, go ahead and try them. I have a link below, please use my link. Thank you, Timmy, for the codes. And yeah, let's move on. Okay, 
So my next interesting fact about ancient Persia is the women's rights. So ancient Persia is one of the only cultures that's really celebrated for being wonderful to women. Women could work the same as men could work. They had political equality. They had they could own land. They could like be supervisors and stuff. I'm sure it wasn't 100% equal. I'm sure there was sexism in there somewhere. But just in general, um, women had a, a lot more rights and that's amazing. They got equal pay for the same jobs that they did. They got to be in the military, thinking ahead of their time, that's for sure. We're still not there in a lot of ways, but whatever. My next fact is that ancient Persia came up with the first monotheistic religion, which, is, which means it's the first religion that only follows one god instead of multiple and that religion is called Zoroastrianism or Zoro Zoroastrianism I'm not 100% sure how to say it but I say Zoroastrianism and I love Zoroastrianism a lot um, I have a video completely on that where I go do the Zoroastrian pilgrimage it's just such a wonderful religion and it originated in Iran and it again first monotheistic religion that religion actually inspired Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and all of the above. And another interesting fact is Mazda, the car company, actually comes from Ahura Mazda, which is the god for Zoroastrians. So next time you see a Mazda, just know that that's ancient Persian. <laughs> My next fact is that Iranians basically came up with birthday parties. So it actually is um, documented that the king would always celebrate his birth, which wasn't like a traditional thing that normal people would do, mainly because you didn't know what day it was ever back then. So how would you ever know it's your birthday, you know? But <laughs> they, they, obviously if you're a king, somebody's counting the days or some there's calendar in your life. So the king would always celebrate his birthdays and just celebrations in general. I'm not going to say Persians created that, but we have definitely been partying for a long, long time. The next interesting fact, I found this one super interesting because it relates to me personally. And again, this is another one that maybe you can take it into the context of other cultures or whatever, but ancient Persians would always eat dessert after their meals <laughs> and this is something that me and my mother do religiously <laughs> it doesn't have to be like a large dessert or something but after a meal like we have to put something sweet in our mouths and that's just something apparently that ancient persians did as well and the greeks frowned upon that for some reason they were like oh these fatties but then the persians frowned upon the greeks because they were like these uncultured people that don't have fun in life, you know? <laughs> Iranian people just like to have fun, so yeah, we love sweets and it's like a custom thing that, I mean, I always eat a sweet every single day, so. Iran also had the first postal system. This is another thing I learned about when I was in Yaz. There's really not much more to that, but <laughs> there was the first organized, like, postal system was in ancient Persia and I think that's really really cool. This one is kind of debated but there is this thing called Darius's scroll and a lot of people say that this is the first like p bill of human rights. So basically like the first like declaration of independence or like you know like a an important document <laughs> that means something in society and lists out human rights that was apparently made by Darius the Great. But that one, again, it's debated, so you can you can look into that one yourself. Oh my god, this is my favorite fact. I should have said this one at the very beginning. So, roses are ancient Persian. <laughs> I didn't know this, but roses originated in Persia, and they were actually exported from Iran or Persia or whatever into, like, Europe, and then Europeans, like, fell in love and took it everywhere. But roses are Persian, and that's so cool to me, because my name is Rose, and like, I'm Persian. <laughs> Sorry. I always like, I was always kind of mad, because I was like, Rose is such a white person name, like, I'm such a white person, <laughs> like, I'm an old white person. 
But now that I know that, I'm obsessed. I mean, I've always liked my name, honestly, but now I'm obsessed with my name. I cannot believe that roses are exclusive to Iran. All of you guys can't even look at roses. Okay, but anyway, I found that one super interesting. And piggybacking off of that one, Iranians were the first people that made up perfumes and stuff. And still to this day, if you know an Iranian person, you know that they love perfume and put on a lot of it. But yeah, because of the roses, they were able to make like a rose scented perfume. And then Europeans found that and they obsessed over it. Iran is also the first place where there's a documented uh, case of breast cancer and breast cancer removal and survival. So Atusa, who was actually the king's wife or daughter, I'm the worst, she had a lump in her breast and they removed it. Now, I can't even imagine what that was like in ancient times. I can't even imagine. I bet she was a bad bitch. Just, I bet she was, okay? Because they didn't have anesthesia, so I don't know if they did this when she was awake, I don't know. But they did it, and they did it, and she survived. So that's really, really cool, in my opinion. Atusa, just in general, too, is a really, such a bad bitch. Like, oh my god. I should make a whole video about, like, Persian figures and what they've done and how cool they are, but she's a really cool one if you want to look into her. Iran is also the birthplace of wine, some say. That's also debated, but I'm gonna pretend that it is, especially because Shiraz wine. <laughs> even if it wasn't the birthplace of wine, which again, I believe it was, but even if it wasn't, they loved wine <laughs> a lot. And piggybacking off of that one, Iranians, ancient Persians, loved extravagance, and they still do to this day. I have, I mean, I guess I, I haven't really explored other cultures as much, but I have never in my life seen a culture that is so obsessed with luxury. <laughs> it's like, a, it's, it's beyond like a want, it's like a need for a lot of Iranians. Like a lot of Iranians will put buying like a Mercedes over paying for something important. And a lot of Iranians are really rich. Most of us are, sorry, now I'm just being narcissistic and prideful, but a lot of them are rich and have really good jobs and can't afford this stuff. But yeah, it, it goes back to the ancient days is what I'm trying to tell you. Iranians have always loved luxury and like partying. Ancient Persia is actually not as well documented as ancient Greece or ancient Rome because ancient Persia was richer. So in ancient Greece and ancient Rome, they would like write their history on clay, right? If you put clay in fire, it becomes a rock forever. You know what I mean? And nothing, if you break it, you can put it back together. But ancient Persians were richer and they could afford leather and they could afford like different kinds of feathery things. So any historical um, transcription that they might have, it probably, burned or faded or you know you know like leather fades there's literally not as much documentation just because it was like on paper instead of being on rocks this is all stuff i've researched by the way I, i'm not like pulling this out of thin air but yeah always a love for extravagance parties perfumes riches wines caviar like just always Everybody has always thought they were the most upper class if they're Iranian. Next interesting fact is the color royal purple comes from Iran. There were these, I think they're sea creatures, I will put the name in here, but there were these creatures that gave off a purple dye and it, they're really hard to catch or they're, they're rare or something. So the purple dye is super rare and it's really rich and beautiful. So it became like a thing of luxury and rich people and royalty would always hoard purple clothes because it's just fancy. And the color purple just became like a symbol of wealth, even if it wasn't made from that special shell, mucus dye, whatever. Yeah, the, the whole royal purple thing and like purple being royalty thing comes from ancient Persia. Ancient Persia also, a big reason I think it thrived for so long is because um, the kings had a tolerance for religious difference and diversity, so it wasn't like a thing of like, everybody has to be 
this or everybody like you know there was none of that in ancient Persia and that's probably the reason why it was able to naturally grow and thrive for so long until the racist white people came along and ruined everything just like they always do. Did you hear me? Did you hear that? Okay. The racist white people love to just ruin everything. They do. They do it all the time. Don't tell them. Okay, bye. Anyway. <laughs> Another reason that ancient Persia was able to thrive so much was because they had horses and a lot of other places didn't. So um, yeah, they were able to ride in on their horses and take over <laughs> because everybody else was just like, okay, we don't have horses. Ancient Persia also had 50 million people at the height of its um, reign and that might not seem like a lot now, but in ancient times when there's like only a hundred million people in the whole world um that's a lot of people so that's pretty cool it was also one it was also the first place to have an advanced road that connected a lot of different places which again probably aided to the whole rise and everything they were also one of the first places to emphasize makeup and wigs both men and women would wear eyeliner, they'd wear wigs, and some of the super duper rich people would actually uh, put gold dust in their wigs. Can you imagine living this lifestyle? Just, anyway. And as I mentioned before, super luxurious people. A really good example of us being really bougie was Darius III, when he went to fight Alexander the Great, he took 300 cooks, 300 musicians, and 70 wine men. I don't even know what a wine man does. <laughs> but that's that's the point of like godlike, like scary rich mentality that they had gotten to and they thought they were absolutely untouchable. They thought that they needed 300 cooks. Maybe if you took 300 militia men and 300 army people, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he took about 670 people just to feed him and entertain him. That's my last ancient Persian fact, but ancient Persia then went on to inspire more wonderful Iranian Persian people who changed the whole world, like Omar Khayyam, who was a mathematician, a philosopher, an astronomer, who discovered so much and has done so much for science and poetry. Iranians in general have done pretty much everything in the world for poetry. We have Hafez, Sadi, Rumi. We have wonderful poets who inspire people every single day still to this day. Um, those are all the ancient Persian facts that I had gathered for you guys, but I do also have modern Persian facts that I gathered for you guys, and I'll do that in a separate video. Please subscribe if you want to see that. I'll probably post that after this one. Thank you, Timmy, for the codes. Please click the link below and check out Timmy and check out their products and shop. Get your tea on, girl. Pretend you're in ancient Persia drinking tea and putting tea on your face. And live your life and think about me and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch. I don't know, I'm on one. Okay. Follow Sirius Black the Poodle. He also has an Instagram. He is so cute. And I love you, Sirius, and you people of the world. I miss Jenna Marbles. Does anybody else I have to go? Okay.